Okay, more negative feedback. This is um, now regulation of metabolism. This is uh, really important. Uh, those of you that took the mock exam and did those essays, which is just about everyone. Um, might have seen thyroxin as part of one of your essay questions. Well, if only we had done this a little bit earlier, you would have known what that was, or you would have known you should have known and you had forgotten. But um, the thyroid gland is really important in your metabolism. Okay, here's how it works. The hypothalamus Again, what is that? Part of your brain. It's nervous tissue. And so in our flow chart, it is right at the top. Okay? So that will, if it is detected that your body needs activity from the thyroid gland, the hypothalamus will begin secreting TRH, uh, which is thyroid releasing hormone okay or I'm sorry TSH releasing hormone so here we go I misspoke hypothalamus is going to secrete releasing hormones that affect the pituitary gland and there's the pituitary gland okay then the pituitary gland says okay I'm getting this signal from the hypothalamus it's, it's sending me this releasing hormone so I've got to release some TSH TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. So TSH releasing hormone causes the anterior pituitary to release TSH. Now thyroid stimulating hormone further stimulates the thyroid. The thyroid gland is in your throat area and it produces hormones called thyroxine hormones. Okay, And they have tremendous roles in how you metabolize nutrients and in your development. Bone growth is affected by them. Your mental development is affected by them. How you use energy, your blood pressure, your heart rate, but just a myriad of, of, of uh, really important uh, processes is uh, controlled by these thyroxine hormones. Okay. Now, the thyroid makes these hormones by secreting something called tyrosine and it is, needs to find iodine in the body to become these thyroxine hormones. Okay. And so, if we've got thyroxine, they're doing what they need to. Do, they they need to do. If we have enough, this will negatively feed back on the hypothalamus and cause the hypothalamus to stop making releasing hormones. So we can shut down the pituitary. So we can shut down TSH, um, and and then we don't continue to make it. But if we need it. If, uh, then we will continue to make it. If the body does not detect, if the hypothalamus does not detect thyroxine in the body, then it will continue to produce uh, and stimulate the thyroid until it gets detectable levels of thyroxine in the bloodstream. Now, here's an interesting problem. Why do we have iodized salt? Well, because iodine is not always plentiful in our diet and so one way to get it is to put it in the salt that we put in our food. And so um, why do we want these th 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 to do that? Well, um, iron deficiency, I'm sorry, iodine deficiency causes the thyroid to enlarge, okay? Because if you don't detect, if you don't have iodine, then the thyroxines don't get made. So your hypothalamus never gets notified that you're making thyroxine because essentially you're not. Uh, it's not combining the, 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 um, the hormone, the, the, product of the thyroid gland is not getting combined with iodine to make the thyroxine. So, Essentially, your hypothalamus is just permanently turned on with result with uh, regard to this, and the thyroid keeps trying to be to produce the uh, the the tyrosine that it's that is needed. 
Okay, if there is no iodine, then that step doesn't happen. We're not going to uh, turn off this part of the feedback loop. In fact, it's going to stay on. And so what we get is this crazily enlarged thyroid gland as it is stimulated to just keep making uh, thy the, the tyrosine over and over and over again uh, and to no avail because there's no ox iodine to, to combine with it. That's goiter. And there's your iodized salt. Okay. Um, blood calcium levels. Okay. This is another really easy hormonal control system to learn about. Okay. If your calcium level in your blood is too high, the thyroid, another use of the thyroid gland, okay, is going to be stimulated to produce a hormone, hormone called calcitonin. What's it called? Calcitonin. Okay, and it will cause the kidney to reabsorb calcium. So we're going to get out of the blood because it was too high in the blood. Okay, it will also cause us to deposit more calcium in our bones, which is a storehouse for calcium. So we'll get it out of the blood, into the bone, into the kidney, where uh, we can, where it can be used sufficiently. Now if we do this really well, we might detect that the blood calcium level is getting a little too low. Okay, In this case, other glands nestled in the thyroid, symbolized by these red dots, called the parathyroid glands, Okay, will secrete a different hormone. They will be stimulated to secrete parathyroid ho hormone, or PTH, Okay, which has exactly the opposite effect. It will cause um, 